Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely consider hitting subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and realise how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, well, you're a bit of a glutton for punishment, aren't you? For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some PK fire. We're going to go with a slightly more Burning Abyss oriented variant and uh, have a look at that, basically. We all know Burning Abyss is one of my absolutely all-time favourite decks, and I really wanted to try it out with the PK variant on the go. Now, it is worth noting that this isn't a super serious deck build. This is one I've just been playing with a little bit online, and I just wanted to show you guys exactly what I've been playing with and... Uh, well, just talk a little bit about how it's going for me. Now again, it's nothing too serious, so it's definitely not as refined as it should be, but that will happen a little bit over time, and I may release some lists further down the line, depending on how that goes. But if you are someone looking to play PK Fire, then this may give you some ideas of exactly how to go about doing so. Some ideas on ratios, text maybe that you hadn't considered, and all of that good stuff. As a quick note before we continue, if you're feeling inspired by this video to go ahead and pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, or even Pokemon ones for that matter, you should consider checking out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There is a link in the description to their eBay store, which will net you a cheeky discount, courtesy of yours truly. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. Okay, so as discussed before we got into this, this is a slightly more BA heavy version of the deck because this is frankly just the way I wanted to play it. So it's not necessarily the most optimal way, but if you're out there and looking for some ideas of how you could play the deck, this might give you some ideas of what ratios and stuff you could go with. So we start off with two copies of Graph. I think two is perfectly fine, as is the case with most of the Burning Abyss monsters, or at least certainly some of them for that matter. We really want to be able to get these from the deck, so seeing them in our opening hand isn't ideal, but having multiple names isn't the worst thing in the world. Two copies of Graph is perfectly good, and of course summoning from the deck is pretty bonkers. Two copies of Seer because, well, two copies is perfectly fine. I think three is a little bit overkill considering we're not playing pure, uh, but one doesn't feel enough, especially if it gets hit with something like Call by the Grave. You want to have another way to see this card to keep that loop going round. Libix, great for obviously just unclogging your hand. Two copies of Farfa for the utility. There's a lot less cards that this can hit effectively than it used to back in the day, so I think three is a little bit overkill again because we're not playing a pure variant, but two is more than enough for utility and, of course, having additional names. Just a single copy of Skarm, I think that's plenty. You just can search a utility card if you need to, or, of course, you can set up your tour guide for the following turn. A single copy of Alec, again, for much the same reasons as Farfa. It's a little bit less of something that you can make too much use of in the modern game, but it is cool to be able to switch off the odd cards effects when you get the opportunity to do so. Calcab is really good for forcing the activation of back row. There are a lot more back row cards being used in the current game, so with that in mind, this has a little bit more use than it would normally. And a single copy of Barbar, again, for the additional names, for the burn going into time, and all of that good stuff. We have triple copies of Tour Guide. This is pretty self-explanatory. It summons a BA or Phoenix Rhino Warrior and sets off your plays from there. We have a single copy of Phoenix Rhino Warrior. Back in the day, of course, we used to run three. It was pretty much mandatory. Now one is more than enough. We really don't want to see it all that much in this particular build. We want to be able to just get it off Tour Guide and go off from there. And then we move on to our Phantom Knight package. Triple copies of Silent Boots seems perfect. Two copies of Torn Scales has worked perfectly fine for me. Two copies of Cloak, again, much the same. And a single copy of Ragged Gloves. This particular package has worked really nicely in testing so far. I'm happy to change it as and when I see things come up, but honestly, this has worked great for me. We're in a single copy of Edgem Saber, still one of the best cards that you can play in this deck. Just absolutely bonkers. We're running a small danger package. We want the level 3s, and Nessie is basically just there to search them. Of course, being able to dig deeper into our deck, free extenders, all of the good stuff that we could possibly want. We have triple copies of Parallel Exceed, well, because it does what it says on the tin. Free Exceed summons is pretty nice. We have triple copies of Forbidden Droplet. This card's becoming more and more compulsory as the game goes on. Absolutely broken, really, really strong card. Anyone that plays with it knows how strong this is. You need to play it in there if you've got the room for it, and if you can afford it, and if you have access to it. Triple copies of Triple Tactic Talents. Um, if you get hit by hand traps, which is a real possibility with this deck, this is a good way to to punish your opponent and uh, in doing so you can of course push yourself back into the game generate advantage and all the rest of it 
We're running one of each of the rank up magic cards. Honestly, these are for just spamming through our X seed summons. Uh, with Rusty being at more than one, you could potentially run additional copies if you wanted to. But I think that honestly, this all works perfectly fine as is. A single copy of the Call by the Grave, if it was up more than one, we would be running more. And a single copy of Rota because Phantom Knights are warriors. We're running triple copies of Fogblade because honestly, even if you do open one, it really doesn't matter. It's just another way to interrupt your opponent. The amount of times multiple Fogblades just ends an opponent's turn, and then you can go on and win shortly afterwards. And a single copy of Shade Brigandine, pretty self-explanatory for what this does. You can also just link it off with Link Spider, which can set up a zone for Parallel Exceed, and you can go off from there. And then we move on to our extra deck here. Um, again, I'm just running a relatively standard BA package in the extra deck, in my opinion. A single copy of Cherubini is more than sufficient. Two copies of Dante is all you need. You'll never make a third. We're running Beatrice because we can, and we absolutely love this card. Please bring it back to three, Konami. We're running a single copy of Grape Dante. This is one of those cards that people just forget exist sometimes. If they crash into your Beatrice on the bank in that, you know, you're not going to have access to this card, well, then you're going to absolutely fuck them up. Grape Dante was less of a problem during the Sky Striker days because people had ways to get rid of uh, Beatrice a little bit easier, but a lot of the time you force them into getting her off the board just so they can get rid of it and not go on from there, and this will just punish them for doing so. We then move on to our Phantom Knight cards in the extra deck, so we have Rusty Bardish at 1. 1 is still perfectly sufficient. You could go for a second if you want to, but honestly, at the speed at which you go through this deck, 1 is more than enough. Single copy of Break Sword, pretty self-explanatory. Single copy of Raiders Knight, again, self-explanatory. We're running the Requiem stuff because, of course, we can use those rank up magics to go into these and go absolutely ham. And then we move on to our Neither Engine stuff. So we've got Bamboos and Gossip Shadow, again, pretty self-explanatory. A single copy of Link Spider, as discussed, this is basically just gets rid of your Shade Brigandine and gives you a way to play from there. Uh, we're running a single copy of IP Mascarena. Uh, of course, we can just set up other cards during our opponent's turn. And finally, a single single copy of Curious. This card is easy enough to tutor out in this deck. Being able to send stuff, mill stuff, it's all of the good things we could possibly need. Again, this build is far from perfect. It's just the one I've been playing and one that's slightly more BA-centric because I really wanted to uh, make use of those because it's one of my favourite decks of all time. Again, certainly not going to be super optimal, but this might give you some ideas of how you could play your own builds. And that is all for today's video. Thank you very much for making it this far. If you haven't already, you should consider hitting subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss out on this kind of hot garbage in future. It's worth noting that this isn't the only kind of content we do on the channel. We do deck profiles, combo tutorials, how to play videos, and all of the good stuff you could possibly want. But anyway, that is enough waffling on from me. Hopefully you have already hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.